Hi, and welcome to DX Engineering's Q&A Wednesday this week. I'm Mark, W8BBQ. And I'm Rod, K8RR. Yes, you are. And you have a, what, what's, you have a blue shirt on today. Yeah. Was, what's was, with the blue shirt? The blue shirt, uh, this is the uh, ARRL 100th anniversary uh, uh, shirt that I got five years ago. Oh. It was, it was in 2014 when I went to the convention. Mm-hmm. And Very I got, good. And I got the shirt. So I'm wearing it today because it's a little bit after five years later. Huh. So the ARRL is celebrating 105 years. Very good. We'll have to see if they have a 105-year shirt. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No. What are we talking about right. today? Hey, we wanted to talk about uh, some questions we had rolling in this week about um, all the knobs on, on, uh, on my new radio. What do I do with them? Yeah, um, a lot of the questions center around the filtering and the tuning in and the pass band and, and okay. shift and width and things like that. So okay. we yeah, kind of wanted so to go over some of the basics. We're going to do some of that. So Mark's going to point some things out on the big screen while I'm working the controls on the radio. And uh, today we're going to work uh, with the FTDX-101D. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so here's the radio. And uh, we'll start off on wide. Told you that signal wouldn't be there uh, once we started taping. So we'll tune across the band and find a signal to listen to. Of course, we can see where they are on the big scope. Now, now here's something about sideband that's a little bit difficult. Is that um, just because you see a signal or just because you hear a signal doesn't mean you have it tuned in right. Correct. And so. Correct. So you can get there quickly, but you may have a little more work to do. You have to tune slowly. Uh-oh, I went past it. There it is. There it is. See, so you can see the signal coming up on the screen there. There. And once a lot of the guys uh, wind up operating on the even number, in this case, this uh, QSO is on 7245. Mm -hmm. And uh, but, uh, it's hard to get right now I have the filter at uh, 12 kilohertz. Yes, um, the roofing the filter I a project, could be changed to 3 kilohertz, which I'm changing here. here on the touch screen, and it's showing up on the big screen. And Rod, why would you want to go from uh, 12 to uh, 3 kilohertz on the roofing filter? The, which is also known as the first IF, mm -hmm. or the only IF in this particular hybrid SDR radio. Um, it, the reason for doing that would, would be to cut out interference uh, from an adjacent, adjacent frequencies above and mm -hmm. below this signal. But if you choose the wrong filter, which I'm going to do intentionally here, I've, cho I've chosen the 600. I'll do that again mm -hmm. so you can see it on the screen. There it is okay. up there. So we I've chosen the 600, six. and uh, that would be good for uh, CW. Yes. But it's not probably good for sideband. Yeah, probably CW only, right. Not, or not, not single sideband. I sure. can't even figure out how to tune in the signal on sideband yeah. because that's too narrow. So we'll go back to... And if you can, go, can you go back to the uh, 600 again for a second. second? Can you go back to the 600 filter for yeah. a minute? What's nice on most of the newer radios too, if you um, look at the upper diagram there between the two meters, is that uh, it actually shows you um, the, the pass band, right? A, a description of the pass band, there. Yeah. so you can kind so of uh, also yeah, visually keep an eye see. On that. And when I change to the three, your, you could see that it widens, right? And then, and so once you wide it out to three kilohertz, like you have, mm -hmm. are you stuck with that? Is that it? You're done. No, that's not it. That's not it. Not only can I um, select that filter width, but I can also, or I can also adjust the widths. Right. Um, in the uh, DSP uh, here, with the width width control. Right. Um, shift in width is uh, what it's called on the uh, Yesu. It's called twin passband tuning on the ICOM. Mm -hmm. And uh, so not only if we keep an eye on that uh, or here, I'm, I can change the width to something that's too narrow. Right. Or just right if there's interference on the, the adjacent uh, frequencies mm -hmm. or really wide to listen to a, a really nice signal. 
that's uh, kind of in the air because now after I've cut down the the bandwidths okay I can shift it to one side which comes in real handy if there's an adjacent station uh, on one side or yeah, the other yeah during a contest for example uh, you can kind of block the guy out a little bit that's up the band from you let me turn that up so you can hear it of course so you don't use the shift that high mm -hmm. you usually have it centered a lot of times, I'll, uh, operating CW, I'll have the shift a little bit uh, off to one side or the other, depending whether I'm operating CW normal or CW reverse, which right, would be right. putting the, the uh, signal on the other side of the sideband, and uh, the other side of the carrier, that is, mm -hmm. on the opposite sideband. So um, there's more controls here, uh, the notch. Um, and the APF uh, can uh, help you uh, focus in on a particular signal mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. or cut out one that's, uh, that's interfering. Right. Um, of course, uh, one of the main things to keep in mind is that you don't always have to run the RF gain all the way up. You can uh, turn the RF gain down. And, and that'll that'll hang the S meter on most radios right up at uh, wherever you've set that amount. Yep. Um, but that cuts out the background noise. Okay. And lastly, how about the, um, the, the ATT button? What is that? The ATT is your attenuation. Mm -hmm. And that uh, allows you to, uh, to cut down the signal level, just similar to the RF gain control, but to do it um, at, at a uh, a certain amount. Mm -hmm. In this case, we can select 6 dB of attenuation. Or 12. So you can watch the, the signal strength meter on the screen. Or in this case, this one has 18. And now you can see that the S meter is barely responding because we've cut down the signals coming into the front of the radio by right. 18 dB. Right. And that would be most useful in what type of situation? Um, whenever you're listening on a noisy band mm -hmm. to weak signals, you'll cut down, especially because you have a big transmit antenna that you're listening on, right. not a, a low noise receive antenna. You'll cut down the background noise, and then this way you can turn up the audio gain. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still have it. Right. And, uh, and you have and you a still clearer have signal with right. less uh, right. noise. And uh, again, we had uh, chose to use the FTDX 101D today, Rod did, but um, most of the things he went over are available on, uh, on all the brands of radios. Yeah, the, um, the ICOM has all of the same kinds of controls available as do the Kenwoods and, mm -hmm. uh, and others. So that'll do it for this edition of DX Engineering Q&A Wednesday. Let us know if you have any questions. Yes, please let us know about your questions. Okay, take care. 73. So,